Officer, uh, questions from Coach, and then break up after that. Mike, did you talk about your quarterback spot? Yeah, I think uh, we, Coach Mack hit on it and really did a great job talking about it. Right now, there's a few guys coming back that start some games for us in Wiley Green and Evan Marshman, and those guys have gotten the bulk of the reps with the ones with the addition of Tom Stewart to that mix. Uh, today, what I would tell you very simply is that the, the scrimmage really seemed to speed up the quarterbacks and their pre-snap mechanics and their ability to get us in the right play, which is so critical in our offense. So it'll be a great learning experience for all of us. Uh, they'll learn from the film, and, and I expect a week from today, uh, scrimmage two would be a lot different for that position. And, you know, again, I, I couldn't even tell you who's ahead right now without watching the film. It's close, but uh, I, I am longing for the day when somebody will snatch that job by the throat and never let go. Sure, what's your timeline and hoping to do just that? Yeah, I mean, I would love to have clarity in it yesterday, uh, but I don't. And so certainly next week in the scrimmage and this body of work throughout this week will be uh, critical in us trying to make that determination. We'd love to be at that point coming out next Saturday, but uh, if we're not there, we're not there. As far as your run game, Coach, uh, anybody stand out? before you run the football, they like to have a couple guys run the ball really hard. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, we talked about it after the first day in pads the other day, the impact of Charlie Booker and how nice it is to see his balance and his ability to break tackles. So we saw a couple glimpses of that today. Uh, Ari Broussard is always different with pads on. That's what earned him a scholarship in the spring is his ability to run through the trash. And come out the other side, I thought Cam Montgomery had a great run. And then, you know, again, like, we can't forget about Juma and Aston Walter. You know, Aston is a guy that I am so thankful for in this program. He is absolutely a do-everything right guy. He's what a six-year senior should be. Most of your uh, coordinators were talking about, he played last year. He played last year. I mean, all that. And what's the biggest difference you see in those guys that play, that got that experience, that can kind of translate over into this season now? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think anytime you play 21 true freshmen, uh, in a season, number one, I've never been a part of that. But what you saw was their ability to grow in the offseason and come into spring ball and know what it looks like, what it feels like in a game, and to make those growths, take those next steps in spring ball, I, I thought it had tremendous value. Some of these guys, like uh, there's a couple of them, like the fact that Wiley and Clay Servant are redshirt freshmen is like laughable in a really good way. You know, they don't, they don't hold themselves or carry themselves like that. They have game experience. And uh, they're performing like old vets. I have to like remember that Clay Servant actually turned 18 last week. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard to believe in his Richard freshman year. You know. I'm curious how you feel like communication continuity has been front On the offensive line, we are definitely. <laughs> I love this line actually, so I'm going to spit it back at you. Sam. <laughs> like uh, just like this great city we're in, the great university we represent, we are certainly under construction right now, right? Like every day, and every day is getting better. Uh, but once we can get the right five, once that, that kind of takes form, whether it's the five, the six, or the seven, I'd love to have eight offensive linemen we felt great about. Then I think those calls and, and the working together will, will uh, I think it will increase rapidly. But it's certainly better than a year ago. It's better in the spring, and it's better than last week. But it's not where we need to be. A lot of your coordinators talk about the junior college and the grad transfers that have come in. How impactful have they been so far in the month or two? especially with some of them that yourself and Coach Mack have already coached in previous spots. Yeah, I think those guys had tremendous value. It was really interesting to me in our leadership council meeting the other day to hear the guys, number one, talk about how well they integrated, but also talk about uh, how guys who have more experience than anybody in the system, in Brian Chafin and Reagan Williams walking in and starting to coach and help from the first day they were here. Uh, and, and honestly, like that's music to my ears. That's part of the reason Brian and, and Reagan were such no-brainers for us, is we we knew they could help the growth in the summer, and then you know we hope they can strap it on and, and obviously do their jobs in the fall too. But they've been awesome, and, and they're not the only ones. Nick Leverage just having an understanding of, of a lot of these <coughs> concepts coming in. From coach, his time with Coach Mack has been great. But you hear Brian Smith talk. <coughs> hear about those three junior college guys on that side of the ball and the value they've had. You look at offensively and you know, there's six grad transfers over there on offense. It's got a chance to, if those guys end up in the, as a starter or in the 2D, those are going to help us and their experience is going to help us. So it's all been positive. And again, the fact that I was so worried about how they would integrate with our team and that it was seamless is just, uh, again, it's such a testament to our players, our culture, and our strength and conditioning staff. 
what did you see from some of those guys? Because these grad cat transfers came in expecting to play. What have you seen from the guys that they're now in competition with as far as how they changed their efforts? Exactly what you wanted to across the board. Competition makes everybody rise up. And it is the old iron sharp desire. And I think those things are real. And that's exactly what we've seen. Whether you see a grad transfer kind of rising to the top or if you see them just pushing like crazy. Because maybe they don't have the reps or the experience in the system. But everybody sees their talent. Everybody sees the way those guys work. It's, it's, it's so valuable for our program. Skill sets and qualities of your quarterbacks are obviously very different. Can you envision opening the season or moving through the season using multiple quarterbacks? You know, in certain situations, absolutely. I think uh, we always talk about matchups on offense. And so if this person is the best one for this role, We'll throw them in there, absolutely. And it's not a stereotypical thing. I think the easy one to look at is see what an incredible athlete Giovanni is and just say, oh, well, you're going to throw him in there and run the ball. But he's got a howitzer for an arm. So I don't think we'd ever just say he's going to go in the game and run the ball. And none of our quarterbacks are unfortunate athletes, luckily. So uh, we'll be able to pretty much do the whole offense with whoever's in there. For your, uh, so your challenges from the first year, and not everything you guys encountered. What, what about for you? What's been your biggest takeaway since you arrived here on campus? What you're trying to build, what you want to do, that progress has been at this point? Yeah, I think the, uh, first off, the best thing has been the staff and the continuity of the staff, keeping nine of these 10 assistants. And you heard Drew kind of talk about taking over the special teams. And what I would say to you there, when we found out one of our coaches was leaving for another job, Drew was my first call. And I just asked him, I was like, hey, bud, what do you think? And he was kind of like hemming and hawing. Like, if you know Drew Sabota, he kind of does. And he was like, you know, I, I think I still want to stay coaching offense. And so I gave him a day, called him back. And uh, I said, so what about that special teams job? And he said, coach, I was going to call you. You know, I know it's how I can help our team the best, help advance our culture and touch everybody on this team. And it's so true. Uh, I wish I could do a Drew Sabota voice for you right now. I need Sean Hillary. If you ever get him, he does a great one. <laughs> But what he has done to touch our whole team and affect our whole team, just him and Hans Straub, the value they have is outstanding. Coach, you mentioned Hans Straub, and I know that you know we talked about this before, but today it was really noticeable about the size of the team, how much bigger they are this year. Can you kind of talk about that, how that helps with the all-around game and program? Absolutely. Um, yeah, bringing in 40 guys this year, 31 last year remained from the class of 33 that we brought in. So. 71 people over the course of a two-year period brought in, and we got 100 on the team. And uh, you know, somebody made a mistake asking me, so these 71 that you brought in, your guys, and, and we'll never get twisted with that. These 100 are our guys, and, and we love them, and we love the way they're working. But you're right, just the sheer numbers and being able to split practices and have position groups that, that look like position groups instead of just like stragglers over there on one end of the field is, has been awesome. Uh, but it, it is positive steps. And they, and we're going to keep going. Like We've got a great recruiting department. All of our coaches are working their butts off in recruiting. We're never going to slow down in that regard. And, uh, but again, I think it's, it's great for our seniors. It's great for our guys that are in every play. And so maybe they don't have to be in every play at that practice. And you're bigger at every position. Yeah, that's, if we're going to miss, we're going to miss with a uh, trait that's hard to find and, and one that we look for in this class with length and length and athleticism. And we did a good job bringing those guys in whether they're scholarship guys or walk-ons. And I think one of the reasons we can bring in walk-ons is our culture, and because we don't have a separate locker room for walk-ons. It's always going to be a meritocracy. I hope our guys don't know who's a walk-on and who's not in the locker room. They're treated exactly the same. So we brought in some really talented kids, and uh, just uh, that whole hodgepodge of those 40 people from different backgrounds, it's a really cool group. And then throw them in with these 60 that were here. It's a lot of fun. Coach, you just mentioned uh, about the lifeline for the program recruiting. Year one and year two, what's been the uh, best part of uh, folks? Don't ask you anymore, but they all, they, they all, their, their ears open to, okay, where can I fit in? Yeah, so you're talking about the positive response from yes. getting on the recruiting trail? Yes. Oh, that's been awesome. It's, uh, yeah, there was a, a little bit, if you came in in our first class, it was a, a little bit of sales, right? Like, this is our vision, come with us. But uh, we always showed them a really clear roadmap so that I think that those guys could trust us and realize the character of the staff that we brought in. But now, like when people get around our team, when they get around the locker room, when they come visit, like, they get excited. And I get excited. 
because uh, we are in on some unbelievable recruits. We have some commitments from some unbelievable recruits. It's just an exciting time. I think uh, we are getting contacted by more people across the country uh, right now than, than we ever have. Uh, whether we reach out to them first or they're reaching out to us to say, oh yeah, I know I've got this offer and that offer, but look like you guys. And that's really cool. Talk about the 40 new faces and 100 on the roster and the depth that you've found yourself. Now you're at the point where you don't have to throw guys in to the water who've been here for three weeks because you're out of options because they're that talented and that good. Are there any freshmen or, or new guys that have in particular stood out through the first couple of weeks of fall camp? Yeah, I think uh, offensively, Zane Knight has caught everybody's attention. He moves at a different speed than most humans, and uh, he is just flat out flat pass. He boy can run. And then on the defensive side, to Braylon Carroll, it doesn't matter if he's in with the threes, the twos, or the ones. He's being impactful, and he is hard to deal with, hard to block, and it's it's hard not to look out there right now, whether it's in a special teams drill or even every opportunity got on defense today and not notice Treshawn DeBones. So uh, those three stand out to me the most in terms of their body of work through this camp. Uh, but the coolest thing that probably happened was in our staff meeting three or four days ago. I asked the staff, are there any misses? in the freshman class, anybody who doesn't belong in college football or in our program. So from a physical standpoint, physical standpoint or a cultural standpoint, our coaches love every one of them. And we really believe they're going to be good football players and good student athletes here at Rice. Coach, uh, we open with uh, West Point in less than three weeks. At what point are we going to start running the defense specifically against a triple option? I don't know, but we play Rice for the next week. No, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you a real answer, I'm sorry. Uh, we have a great plan. We're gonna actually get our scrimmage in next week. We still have two more big installs on offense. Defense is pretty much done, but offensively we still have to install the red zone, and then we have to install short yards and goal line later in the week and get those situations in and make sure we are up to our level, our standard, if you will. Next Saturday at the scrimmage, everything's gonna be live. There will be a red zone component to that scrimmage. There will be a short yards goal line component to that scrimmage. We're going to watch that film with a critical eye, we'll make our corrections, and that night we are going to start attacking Army and start transitioning some of our practice and some of our attention to those guys. They are a pretty good football team. They deserve our attention. Mike, I'm curious, how much time in the offseason do you folks have because of the uniqueness of their scheme and the fact that they are the first opponent working able to spend some extra time, whether it's spring or summer, on preparing? Yeah, without question, we had a chance to meet with some awesome staffs and, and talk a lot of defensive concepts. Coach Smith has a lot of friends in this business that gave us access. And I got to go on a couple of those trips and be a defensive coach for a day, so that was a lot of fun for me. So we started planning, uh, gosh, February maybe, maybe March, and then got a chance to work it in spring ball, got to talk it and really have an install and talk about the base ways of playing it. And then this fall, like you hear, we're going to transition a whole week ahead probably when you normally would. And, and again, that's one of the things that you always hear. It's tough to play us, right? It's hard for a spread team to get 23 personnel and teach their tight ends how to block that scheme in a week. And uh, we hope so, but I, I promise you that Army system is hard to get a good look in a week. And, and so we're going to commit the time. And we've got uh, a couple people that have knowledge of that offense. We feel like we can really get that scout team humming. And that's what we're going to try to get done. Anything else? I really do appreciate you guys coming over today. I, I hope that uh, you'll come back every chance you get. Enjoy talking to our coaches, our coordinators, and certainly these great student athletes. And grab us if we can do anything for you. Thank you all so much.